everybody, I am here today to do some pre-shading on this Shardalon Dragon. I'm not going to show you how I mix the paint, I actually did that, um, basically showed you how I mix, I mix my paint in the Beholder vid. Um, and when I switch over to do some white, I'll stop the camera, just so this video doesn't take really long. Um, so, here we go, I'm going to just do a little bit of um, airbrushing and I might end up speeding up depending how long this takes. have a little bit of tip dry here. I'm using, um, by the way, Vallejo's Model Air straight without, I said I was going to mix the paint, but in all honesty, this is a rare occasion where I'm using the black, um, not the black primer, but the black and I'm using it straight. And I can, for the most part, use it without too much problems with tip dry. Um, So the goal of this pre-shading is to not have it be the ultimate color, but to be essentially a transition um, that we'll see the base coat that we put over it, uh, let it show some shadows through. One of the things that um, I'm looking forward to trying is some transparent or ghost tints. I've seen some folks on other channels like Work Painter Nerd um, use these and they come out really fabulous and it's the same idea except to my mind it's the same idea except that they're just better transparent colors that actually even have a bit of a glossy finish they're kind of nice I actually have a hard time getting the Minotaire paints here in Canada it, the shipping is almost the price of the paints themselves when you, you add it up and so I'm looking at trying um, create text transparents just to see whether I can get a similar effect out of them so I'm going to be placing my order on those. I'm planning on doing, um, using some of that on um, Eldar Jet Bikes and the Flyer at a minimum. And maybe the Wraith Knight. I am going to be doing its own effect on the, the center here, so I don't want to spend too much time on that. 
what I mean by that is I'm gonna I'm not gonna be using the airbrush primarily to get that effect. Sometimes it just helps us to look at it here and to see where is those shadows gonna be. Where should they be? I think I've done a pretty good job at um, getting the right areas. Yeah, I'm fairly happy with that. Okay, I'm going to now mix up some white and I will be right back. Hey everybody, so unfortunately I did do a shooting segment where I showed what I just showed with getting the dark areas, but how I sprayed um, white model air Vallejo on the head on the shoulders here, um, certain areas on the knee and the foot, um, the knee here, and then of course um, on the tips of the wings um, and blended them, you know, in a bit here as well just to um, get that sort of shadowing effect and so hopefully you can see with the same technique that I applied in the darker areas I applied to the outer areas and you can see, you should be able to see it to be much brighter here and starting to show depth um, that's uh, simulating light like you know with the white here and the dark that's not shadow but that's actually paint um, and so that's the the point here and so next what I'll do is I will actually shoot um, showing the um, base knee base coating this now um, I suppose it's a blessing in disguise it's going to keep this video a little bit shorter um, than what it could be and so I will mix up my paint and I will be right back I am back I had a bit of a airbrush difficulty I had to clean out the inside of my airbrush because um, I ended up getting a little bit of splattering on the tips up here in the white when I was doing the red and so I had to go back and redo that so as you'll see um, I did start this with the red and the dark spots here to show, um, you know, where um, essentially to get used to this color and just to start, I started in the darker areas. That's where I'll start again. Hopefully I don't have this problem because I was just getting a bit of splattering and that is not good when we're trying to show our lighter areas because um, it really stands out. I'm using um, Vallejo Game Color. It's um, the Scarlet Red 72012. I don't remember this happening so much when I use this for the Fire Drake. Um, so it's a bit unfortunate if. I think it's likely my brush and not the paint in this case.
seems to be working a little bit better for me now. Um, I'm about to have to switch over my paint, so I'll be back in a second. But as you can see, I got a really nice layering here just on the inside and the front here. I think the back came out nice. You can It definitely looks to me like um, it's lighter on top um, than on the bottom, you know, and the insides here. Um, these, this in here where I've really painted it black um, definitely looks darker. And so um, I will refill my paint and get started on this side. Okay, I am back to see if I can finish this guy off. And I'll do the front here. I think I have one more last time to put paint on here.
Okay. Well, this has certainly been a challenging video to take to work on camera. Um, I've actually had some airbrush problems on this, but I think I achieved what I was trying to look trying to achieve for the base coat. Um, it's kind of hard to see with the fluorescence overhead, but there you can go, you can see that there um, it is it did take quite well to the whole model, um, the red. Um, in the areas where I wanted it darker, I definitely think you can see that there's shadows in there. Um, even underneath the, the actual face um, and then particularly in here. And so next up I will um, end up likely doing a wash um, in the next stage and so I'll come back with that. Thanks for watching.